Today I want to show you how to install the KST Spearhead Bars. This is from their Vanguard collection and they actually have a great video on this subject as well that I used as a, as a guide. But there are some things that were left out of that video, but I also want to tell you all the mistakes that I made, how you can avoid those for yourself and make this a much easier process than what I went through. Without further ado, I want to show you how we went from this to this. Let's go ahead and get right into it. First thing you want to do, remove the two screws on either side of the cluster. That's going to allow us to get it unloosened uh, and eventually be able to unplug that. From here, we want to take off our brake master cylinder and clutch master cylinder, and we want to go ahead and disconnect the switches as well. Now with the brake master, I basically just laid it on top of the tank. Of course, I have a cover there on the tank. On the clutch master, I actually zip tied that to the crash bar on the left hand side. You can cross them up on top of the tank, whatever's easier for you, but we just want to get those things off and then we want to go to the switches. Now there's two screws on the back of these. They're really not hard at all. Once we get the actual plates off of the switch, that's where there's a little tab and we want to get to that to be able to unhook it. Right here, you can see that little tab and essentially you just get a screwdriver and it's going to pop off, allowing that switch to then come off. And then of course, we want to unplug that as well, being very careful not to rip, pull, or pinch any wires. Now here is the clutch side. And so what you'll notice that I do is I actually unhook the unit first, and then that's going to allow me to get that uh, plug on the back of the switch all the way out. And this job is really not that hard. It's more about just patience, taking your time with stuff, dude. It's It, it took me a while setting up cameras and, again, all these mistakes that I'm going to point out here. But it doesn't take a lot of time. Planning through and making sure that you have some patience is really the hardest part of this job. Now, right here, you can see that little wire. And that's basically what disconnects and allow you to pull the switch off. Just again, be very careful with that. Now, if you're going to do this job and you want a set of heated grips or you just wanted a new set of grips anyways, and let's just be honest, you want an excuse to buy something else for your bike, I totally get it. I actually did the same thing. I went ahead and got a set of heated grips. And so this is a great time to do it. The throttle side isn't tough to get that grip off. The clutch side is glued on there. So you can see me starting to think about taking it off. And then I remember this from changing my heater grips on my 19 Street Glide Special. And I was like, screw this. I'm just gonna, I'm just going to leave it on there. Now, here's one of the first mistakes that I did make. You don't have to take the ignition cylinder out, but you want to turn that all the way over to the left. And then the little cover that sits right below that. There's a little plastic piece and you basically just push up on it with a flathead screwdriver and it's going to pop right up and out. I didn't mess up getting it out. I messed up getting it back in, which I'll show you here in a little bit. Once we get that undone, now we can pull the cluster up. You basically have two dummy plugs on the outside and then the main cluster plug in the middle. The main cluster plug and the dummy plug on the left hand side, if you're looking at the cluster, no problem. The one on the right is a little bit tougher because they put the actual connection on the bottom. So you got to get a flathead up under there to be able to pull it out. No real big deal. Just keep that in mind. Once we get that up and out of the way, we can pull the cluster out of there. And now this is where you want to start getting some of the tie straps unloosened and cut off. So that way we can get some extra length whenever we go to reinstall the new bars. We also want to get extra length in the wires. So what we can do here is actually just snip those uh, zip ties. Somebody's already been into my bike, so I had less zip ties than what I thought, but I still had probably, I don't know, two or three. And then there's a little, almost like a, a spark plug uh, wire organizer and it holds those cables on the right hand side right in front of the tank up underneath the cluster area right there. I actually took that off of the wires as well to give me a little bit more length. You can go ahead and unloosen the riser clamp. It's just four bolts. If you have an electric tool to be able to do this, it's going to make it much easier. I don't have that so I just did it all by hand. Now once you unloosen it enough, just be careful and make sure you have that tank uh, covered with something because at one point, once you get those bolts loosened up enough, the bars are going to fall straight down. So just have an extra hand there to hold them or just be aware of that. Now, you're not going to be able to see this too well because I needed extra light to be able to see myself. But essentially what I'm doing here is, again, getting those tie straps cut off 
and then there's a little plastic tray that essentially holds these plugs in place. So once you get them unplugged, you have four of them, by the way, that are actually plugged in and used. Once you get those unplugged, now you want to take that little, uh, little plug holder or whatever. It's just a little plastic piece. It's held in by two clips. You snip the end of the clips off, and then you get the plugs out one by one, and then that's going to give you extra length for those connections as well. Once we get those unhooked from the bar, now we can pull the bar out, and now here comes the fun part. Now the clutch side is not too hard. It's a single wire. You just want to push and pull, push and pull. That's all you're doing in this whole process. And again, just patience. That's all you really need here is patience and don't pull on the wires too hard. The throttle side is a little more difficult because obviously you have the throttle by wire and you have just, you know, your switch wires and all of that as well. So push, pull, take your time with this. It's not super hard. It, like I said, just takes time. And then eventually you'll get it to the point where you can start to pull the throttle by wire out as well. Once we get it to this point, we're just, again, pushing and pulling. Don't pull too hard and this thing will come out eventually. Now, Here's the fun part, man. You start to see this thing come together. You essentially have the KST base clamp and you want the patent pending uh, sign that's stamped in the bottom of the base clamp. You want that facing down and then you want the KST logo on the right hand side. That's going to be on the throttle side facing out. The handlebar for the throttle side has the little notches for the throttle by wire as well. So it's really easy to identify as long as you have this in the correct orientation, you're good to go. You're going to be able to push this down to a certain point. Now, you don't want to tighten up your screws. You actually want to loosen them or even take them all the way out at this point. Push them down as far as you can. And then we're actually going to turn them upside down and take a rubber mallet. And this is where you're just going to beat on this thing until you can get each one of the bars down to where it is flush with the bottom of the base clamp. It's actually going to be at the top of the base clamp because of the orientation I have it in right here. It's easy on the black bars because essentially once you see no more silver, you're good to go. But you really want to make sure that those are flush with the bottom of the base clamp on both sides. From here, you just want to snug these bolts up on the base clamp just so nothing moves while you're getting the wires through. And then eventually when we set them on the bike. Now they actually sent a piece of mesh with this that makes this process so much easier but i didn't get a piece of mesh with mine that mesh you run it through the bars you attach your plugs your wires and it acts like a chinese finger trap and grabs the wire pulls it through boom you're good to go well mine didn't come with it so i improvised i used some weed eater line here and then i taped the wires up the best i could or i thought i was doing it pretty well but essentially what happened is i didn't tape the throttle by wire up good enough so at the bend on the top of the bar there it actually just kept getting stuck. So eventually after struggling with this for like 30 minutes, trying to push, pull, push, pull, I just eventually pulled the weed eater line all the way out and ran it back through and made sure I taped it up, just over taped it almost to an extent. So that way I could, you know, finally get it through there. Now I did the same exact thing for the left-hand side, ran up that weed eater line, taped it to it, and that one pulled right through. That one's really not an issue at all. Now it's time for the fun part. So essentially what you want to do here is you want to lay the bars on the tank here and, and you're, you're going to get them set in the riser clamp. You want to make sure that your cable, your clutch master and your brake master cylinder cables are on top of the base clamp. But here's another thing that I had to do. Your two dummy plugs on your cluster, you want those underneath the base clamp and then the middle connector for the cluster, you want that on top of the base clamp. Those two dummy plugs being on top of the base clamp eventually got me to the point where I could not close the cluster. I could not find a way for the cluster to actually uh, close where I could put those two screws in and complete the job. So that is something that I personally had to do. And right here is where planning comes in to play. You want to you wanna plan where you run your cables and where you run your wires right here because I promise you it's going to save you a ton of time. You also really want to make sure that the bars are turned straight before you ever take the old ones off. So you want the tire straight. 
So that way you're not dealing with what I dealt with right here because my tire was turned off to the left. And so you want to make sure that you have even amount of space for those bars to sit into the riser clamp on either side. It made it more difficult because my wheels turned all the way over to the left. So that's something you want to do before you take the old bars off. Just make sure that it's turned straight. So that way it'll allow you to, to do everything a little bit easier. Now we're going to set the bars in the riser clamp. We're going to tighten it up to the point where it's snug enough where it, it, it will stand up, but it'll still allow you to move it around a little bit. And this again is so important, man. I cannot stress this enough. Your cables, your wires, you want to plan this out. You basically have four plugs that need to be plugged in. And then you have a purple and white wire, I believe that's for your heated grips. That's not going to be plugged in, but you want to set these things in a position where your cables they either need to come underneath your electrical wires or they need to go over top. Now, my personally needed to go over the top of those things. So I didn't have any interference or any pulling and pushing while I was able to turn the bars from lock to lock. Once we get our wires ran and everything is kind of snugged up in the riser clamp. Now we want to put those switches back on and put the clutch master and brake cylinders back on. You're just going to put these on again kind of snug because you're going to want to move these around here for your fitment here in a minute. On the brake side, you're going to pull in the lever just a little bit and it will actually kind of lock into that switch housing there. Now, one more thing that I wanted to emphasize here is before I start to really snug things up and get them fitted and all that, I just want to move the bars around and I really want to just make sure nothing is pinched or pulled or ripped or torn or whatever before I get too far into this. Before I really start to tighten these things up, I just want to make sure everything is good right here. This is, to me, the best part of it. Now I'm 5'7", so I have a little bit shorter reach, and so I still get the aesthetic look of a 14-inch bar. I get my shoulders more relaxed and down and my arms a little bit more bent, but then I get to pull those things in towards me. So you're going to fit it right here. Don't make this mistake though. I actually didn't have the KST base clamp loosened up enough. So what I ended up doing is I couldn't pull them in towards me on their own. So I actually pulled it to full lock left and right. And that actually pulled the bar out just enough where it was no longer even with the bottom of the base clamp. I was going to leave it like that, but there was silver showing and it just, it, it bugged me way too much. So what did I do? I ended up having to pull the bars back out of the riser clamp, disconnect everything, and then take a rubber mallet and beat them back down where they got flush. Just make sure the four screws that are in the base clamp are loose enough where you can actually move them freely and pull them in towards you. Now it's not going to be super easy and you don't want it to be super easy, but just hold one bar, hold the other and pull them in towards you. So once I got these bars set where I wanted them, I then tightened up those base clamp bolts and then the riser clamp bolts. Turned it from lock to lock. Again, didn't feel anything pinching or pulling. And then that's where we can put our cluster back in. So right here, you can see the bars are installed and we got them on there. So they look really good, man. Super slick. I love the adjustability with these bars. And of course, I'm practicing some U-turns, seeing how how this affects my riding and slow speed stuff, but really love the aesthetics here and I love the way they look. Now, once I get on the road and I actually use them for a little bit longer of a trip, I can actually tell you exactly how these bars do and that video will be coming very soon. But uh, overall, not a bad install. Another thing you wanna keep in mind, if you wanna prevent unhooking those connections over and over and over, I probably did it a half a dozen times, because I either didn't have you know, the clearance for the cables or there was a wire that was kind of being pulled or pinched or actually one time the bike even wouldn't start. What happened is I ended up touching my screwdriver to one of the connections because I was had to unplug it again and a slip touched the connections, right? And so I actually just blew a fuse for the battery, thank goodness, okay? But if you want to prevent that, again, just make sure your wiring and your cables are all clear of each other and everything is routed as best as it possibly can be. Now, if you own a 21 or a 22 and I think 23, actually, you actually are going to have to get extensions 
for your cables. Up to a 2020, the Clutch Master and the Brake Master, no extensions are needed. KST actually sells those extensions too, by the way. And I, I think they even have a pre-wired kit or something for their handlebars. So if that's something that, you know, you want to look at, of course, you can do that. But overall, man, the install isn't hard. Just some time, patience, and uh, thinking through how you want to route things. That's the most important thing about this. Again, man, make sure that you're subscribed for the future video where I tell you exactly how I feel about these bars and what kind of difference they made, if any at all. Big thanks to you guys. See you in the next one. And as always, hold them down.